Hello and welcome to a special Kia Electric News episode, which isn't about Kia, it's about Hyundai, but we'll cover it all anyway. This morning, Hyundai has released details of the refreshed Ionic 5 and the Ionic 5 N-Line model in South Korea. I think this can probably tell us a lot about what's coming next to the Kia EV6 and the Genesis GV60. Amongst the highlights is an increased battery pack size from 77.4 up to 84 kilowatt hours, all in the same pack. But it's maintaining the same 10 to 80% charge time of 18 minutes, which is good news. And that will add about another 25 miles of range. If you look at the images, you'll see that they haven't really changed the outside of the design much. It's very subtle what they've done. Um, I'll just go through the highlights. Upgraded Ionic 5 now features an increased capacity growing from 77.4 to 84 kilowatt hours, which increases your range. Exterior enhancements include a refined V-shaped garnish and restyled front and rear bumpers that emphasise Ionic 5's low and wide SUV stance. As a result, the Ionic 5's length has increased by 20 millimetres to 4655. And the other external dimensions, width of 1890, height of 1605, and a wheelbase of 3 metres remain unchanged. To further enhance the Ionic 5's dynamic appearance to improve and improve its aerodynamic performance, the rear spoiler has been extended by 50 millimetres and the vehicle now boasts new aerodynamic wheels. The interior of the vehicle offers improved usability and convenience whilst maintaining a com comfortable living space. The centre console, the upper part of the Universal Island, now features a physical button that can operate frequently used functions such as first row heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel and parking assist function. Also, the Smartphone wireless charger has been relocated from the lower part to the upper part, significantly enhancing usability. Furthermore, a new steering wheel design with interactive, prevent interactive pixel lights has been implemented and the arrangement of infotainment and air conditioning controls have been improved to enhance operational convenience. I wonder how that compares to the EV9s, how many physical buttons are, but I mean, there are pictures, so we can go through it. To enhance the overall mobile experience and convenience, the company has implemented next generation infotainment, which is CCNC, which is what the EV9 and the Kona has now, uh, which gives you drivetrain over there updates. It's not clear from the last announcement on over there updates, whether it's just maps you've got to pay for or the drivetrain updates. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that as long as you've got an active Kia Connect subscription, which is seven years in the UK, you're going to get the drivetrain updates because it's in their interest. It's not clear. Um, someone also asked me if I leave my maps for four years, can I just nip in and subscribe for a year? I guess probably because they're not they're not incremental updates, and I, I've not read anything that says you can't. Furthermore, Hyundai Motor has introduced several new safety and convenience features. These include hands-on detection, yay! Instead of wobbling it, steering wheel, lane keeping assist two, remote parking assist two, forward side reverse parking collision avoidance. All these features contribute to a safer and more convenient driving experience. To enhance marketability, set marketability, several customer preferred features include intelligent front lighting system, digital key two, and built-in cam two. Well, it does say at the bottom, this is for the career market. So will we get a built-in cam? It would be bloody nice, wouldn't it? But I don't know. And second road seat remote folding have been applied. Other measures have been taken to enhance safety and ride comfort compared to previous models. The new Ionic 5 has a shock absorber. I thought they all had shock absorbers. That helps to alleviate vibrations on the road, providing smoother driving experience. Reinforcement to the rear wheel and lower part of the vehicle has been doubled, resulting in improved stability and agility. The stiffness of the vehicle body has been strengthened to reduce low frequency booming noise and motor, and motor noise control has been optimized. Additional sound insulation on the rear wheel motor enhances overall quietness. In terms of safety, the body and front rear doors and beef pillar parts have been reinforced to improve side collision protection. Also joining the line at the Ionic 5N line is a sporty variant that will be positioned between the upgraded base model and the high-performance Ionic N. N-line variant is expected to meet increased demand for sporty styling, appealing to customers who seek dynamic driving experience. Ionic 5N line boasts a more aggressive sporty front and rear design with unique bumpers, stylish side skirts and a set of dedicated 20-inch aluminium wheels to emphasise the model's sporty appearance. Cabin also will have an N-Line exclusive design as you'd expect. The enhanced Ionic 5 and Ionic 5 N-Line will become available for Korean customers starting March 2024. So rest of the world is going to be NY25 so yeah, I'm guessing July onwards. 
And then so there it says now all features and updates introduced is released are based on Korean domestic models, which is probably why we won't get the camera. Anyway, um, the only vi official video I've got is um, one of those YouTube shorts, which is the wrong aspect. But uh, I'll just go through it quickly. A slowed down version uh, to about 25% speed. So it, it just flashes around it way too fast. Um, that's the new front. Even when you slow it down, it's pretty quick. New wheels. New steering wheel with new LEDs. A new phone charger pad moved and some buttons. Digital rear view mirror, I would guess, looking at the angle. Nice. Unusual vehicle to load. Lots of buttons, which is good. Rear wiper. Yay! It's amazing how this still jump cuts around so much, even at 25% speed. But I mean, you, you've got enough here to see what's really going on. It's a pity that the EV6 facelifted model doesn't keep the look of our current EV6, whereas this has largely kept it, which is what they've done is very subtle. Anyway, that's all for this special episode. Thank you for watching.